welcome back. Uh, today we're in part five, fly fishing from the ground up. We've covered uh, wading boots and waders, wading safety with belts, those kinds of things. Last week, fishing vest and lanyards, and this week we're going to talk a little bit about clothing. Uh, probably sounds like a maybe a goofy thing to to actually talk about, but it probably isn't. One of the things I, I talk to a lot of people and get comments about is, you know, what do you wear on hot days? What do you wear on cold days? Certainly, when it's a hot day, I get people ask me, "Aren't you, aren't you burning up today?" And on cold days, when I fish, you know, and it's 10, 12, 15 degrees, aren't you freezing today? Well, no, not really, because first of all, I like to layer. Um, that's a common sense approach to the whole thing. But having the right article of clothing is very important. Um, so I got things divided out basically in two piles here: a summer pile and a winter pile. And somewhere in between, you're going to have to make a have a combination of the two but to start with for example I'm a turtleneck person maybe you are maybe you aren't I love them um, have hunted in them for years but they're not the best thing to have on while fishing and the reason being a lot of people don't think about this but if you're if you're truly waiting and you're in the water and um, regardless of what kind of jacket you have on and your sleeve gets wet and this cotton soaks up a lot of water and then you start casting it's eventually going to work its way down and get into your chest cavity and then it becomes cold so they truly aren't the best shirts to have on. Now, if you're float tubing, different situation. You're not going to be in the water. You're not going to get your hands and arms in the water that much. But certainly, if you're wading and you're wading in something that's going to be uh, chest and uh, waist deep, you're going to get your elbows and your arms in there. You need to have something nice. So let's talk about cold weather and rainy weather stuff first. Uh, without question, the best money you're going to buy and the best money you're going to spend is a, is a nice jacket, a waterproof jacket, something that's breathable. Don't go buying something that's plastic because you're going to melt in it in the summer and, you, and it won't be that warm in the in the uh, winter. But you want a nice jacket, something like this Cabela's model here is what I wear. It's a little short and I like it that way, short around the waist. It doesn't weigh me down, doesn't get down in the water and weigh a lot, but it's got a lot of pack pockets. It's got a D-ring on the back for, uh, for my net on the back when I need it. And then in the summer, lots of other, lots of these uh, nice shirts here. Uh, obviously, you can get these things made in all kinds of polyesters and propylenes and those kinds of things, but these, not only do they wick away summer heat, but they dry quickly. Um, I always like these with the flaps, it makes me feel a lot cooler, but have a, a, a sundry of these around available for, for your uh, layers and putting on different layers, maybe under a jacket. Uh, picked up this a few years ago and I've loved this. This is not waterproof but it is kind of water resistant and uh, allows me to put a couple of these layered shirts on underneath it and then put this on over my waders that way anything that hits me usually cascades away from and out of my waders. Second is our summer stuff. So what do you do in the summer? Well obviously there's a lot of different choices. One of the <clears throat> main concerns I have being redheaded or at least I was in the past is uh, long sleeves. I like long sleeves on my shirts. Uh, especially if I'm float tube and I like a long sleeve, you'd be surprised once the afternoon the sun goes down how cold and cool it can get, how quickly it can get cool in a float tube out on the water. So these nice shirts made by Columbia and various uh, types, <coughs> different companies, Cabela's makes these. These are great shirts. Um, then you can move to the short, short sleeve versions and I love these for creek fishing. I mean, uh, a lot of people would stay away from the bright collars. I haven't found that to be too much of a problem, especially smallmouth fishing if you stay down, stay out of the way. Uh, various shirts, I uh, like this one for example, picked it up last year, it's a Columbia model, got the vented uh, parts in the back, real cool, but it also looks nice. Um, and this is the uh, PFG Performance Fishing Gear by Columbia. Um, I like to have something on, it looks nice, and one of the reasons is, and I learned this many years ago with hunting. When you pull up to knock on someone's door and you want to know, you know, can I park, can I fish your pond, can I fish your lake, could I have access to your stream, it doesn't hurt at all to look like you know what you're doing. That doesn't mean you want to be a dude and be fancy, but certainly you want to have something on that, that makes you look 
uh, at least presentable. So take a look at some of these shirts and um, again stay away from the long sleeve, long sleeve stuff in the winter that's going to soak up a lot of water and drop a lot of water back inside. You want to do that, but learn to layer, learn to play the game, and you'll be just fine. Shouldn't take too much. Um, hope this makes some sense to you. Come back and join us next week as we talk about hats and those kinds of things and kind of finish our series from the ground up and, and go from there. Thank you.